bit nervous, that's all. I mean, this bloke we're going to see, this Justin, mm. he's not going to be asking me anything about my private life, that sort of thing, is he? Of course he ain't. We're not that private. He's not going to want to know about you and Cassandra's little problems. No, no, good. Because otherwise I will... What problems? <laughs> Me and Cassandra haven't got any problems. That's not what you said to me the other night. All right, so there's been one or two minor hiccups in a bedroom department, but they're personal and I told you in confidence. All right. I'm not going to be telling him about your thongs and things. <laughs> and I won't tell him what Cassandra wears either. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. It's been a particularly busy morning. <sighs> Now, I've got all the uh, basic details about your business career, etc. but what I'd like to do is to get an insight into the real you. Uh, how you started, how you became so successful, but more importantly, your lives and your raison d'etre. Well, you know, laboratory garni. <laughs> so, So, um, in your own words and in your own time. Well, where shall I start, Justin? Well, up to a few years ago, we were just very ordinary people living, well, very ordinary lives, weren't we, really? And then, as you know, one day I discovered an historic and almost priceless artefact. Anyway, at first we didn't know what to do with it. That's right. To begin with, we thought about donating it to the British Museum as a national treasure. Yeah. And then we decided to flog it. So, <laughs> before you know, Rodgers and me have come in a nigh on six and a half million quid. Well, after we divvied the dosh up, right, you know, we're making sure that our Uncle Albert got a nice little drink. But we thought of others first. We donated to charity. <laughs> Anonymously, of course. <laughs> so, eventually, we had to start thinking about our future. So. We sought out this um, city stockbroker, and he advised us to invest in a new and vibrant venture. It was a Central American market. It was attracting massive funds from all over the world. We were making more money than a Royal Mint. But we weren't flash. Oh, no, 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 we, we weren't flash. <laughs> There's a name that crops up every now and then. Um, Michael Fisher, landlord of a public house, the Nags Head, Peckham. Uh, what part did he play in the proceedings? Well, Mike invested his life savings in our venture. He actually remortgaged the pub. Mm. I see. And will Mr Fisher be giving evidence? Uh, no, he's in prison. <laughs> he's awaiting trial. The fraud squad claims that he tried to recoup his losses by embezzling the brewery. Well, never was a man more innocent. Uh, I take it Mr Fisher will be pleading not guilty? Uh, no, he confessed to everything. <laughs> uh... For God's sake, Denzel, sit down. You're wearing the marble out. I can't help it, can I? Never been a character witness before. And you think we have? I'm worried. I think Dell's made a terrible mistake. Well, of course he's made a terrible mistake. That's why he's in court. No, I mean having you four as character witnesses. It's like inviting the Manson family to dinner. <laughs> well, we saw Dell and Rodney earlier. They seemed quietly confident. They've arranged to meet Raquel and Cassandra for a celebration lunch, so I'd avoid Pizza Hut if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> Dell was not confident, he was deeply worried. I mean, he didn't even touch me up. <laughs> well, I'm the one with the most to worry about. 
Why? Because I'm managing the nag's head until Mike is released. But how exactly do I know what he got up to? Yeah. I mean, how does Sid know Mike didn't post-date his fiddles so the police will think the Sid's fiddles? There's nothing to be nervous about, Denzel. All you've got to do is go in there and tell the truth. Trick. If I go in there and tell the truth, Dell and Rodney are going to be spending the next five years sharpening Jeffrey Archer's pencils. <laughs> what are you going to do in there, Trick? I'm going to tell them I hear voices. <laughs> no, Trick, you're not on trial. You're a character witness. I know. But I hear voices. <laughs> oh, God. It's going to be one of them days. <clears throat> I notice that your respective properties were company-owned, so you both lost your homes? Yes. I had a lovely little place right on the river. Yeah, well, I had an estate, didn't I, with peacocks and everything. Anyway, at least we weren't homeless. Mm. Due to my foresight some years previously, I had bought another property. So, at least we had somewhere to live. Yeah. It's called our old flat, Nelson Mandela House. <laughs> It just goes to show you how our fortunes altered. I mean, suddenly everything had changed. Yeah. All our good luck turned to bad. Every day there was more rows, there was more bad news. We thought things couldn't possibly get worse. Oh, boy, how wrong we were. It's no good looking at me with that Anne Robinson face. <laughs> I'll look at you any way I like. <laughs> well, at least I am trying to do something about it. And what exactly are you doing? I'm after a stockbroker. You've already got a stockbroker. That is the one I'm after. <laughs> Why didn't he tell me that the stock market was going to crash? He phoned you at least six times. Phoned you on the Monday and said he had to speak to you urgently, but you were too busy to speak to him. Well, I was water skiing. <laughs> you just wasted our bloody birthrights. And then... Trotter's independent traders hired a helicopter to fly to Nice to collect some magazines. Oh, unbelievable! That was you! <laughs> oh. Well, I'm a big man, I've got broad shoulders. The buck stops here, I take full responsibility. Even though it was Rodney's fault. Me? <laughs> How the hell was it my fault? You were the company's director of administration. That just meant Rodney organised the Christmas parties. Yeah, and they were about as exciting as a Buddhist ten night. <laughs> you were the managing director, you were the chairman, you were the chief executive, and you were the president. Oh, it's my fault now, is it? Either you or this is the Chinese year of the dodo. <laughs> Wait a minute. You can't lay all the blame at Derek's door. Mm. I know it's tempting. <laughs> So why is it, whenever we've got something good going, anything that remotely resembles a future, he nauses it up? That's just the way he is. Thank you. <laughs> and it's unfair of you to blame Rodney for all of this. After all, he is your brother. Yes, and just like a brother, he's let me down all his life. <laughs> oh, is that right? Well, if I've always been such a letdown, why did you insist on having me around? To keep my promise to Mum. And you never know when you might need some bone marrow. <laughs> Cassandra, answer that phone, will you, please? Yes, sir. Straight away, sir. Don't worry. This time next year, we're going to be millionaires. This time last week, we were millionaires! <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hear you very well. Well, go in the kitchen, then. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. Look, I worked it all out. I'm serious. Worked out a way in which we can make £100,000. Now, invest that wisely. Uh, invest, invest that wisely. wisely. In invest it wisely, and before you know where you are, you and I can buy a nice little gaff each. All right. Huh? Go on, then. What's the plan? Well, I wasn't going to say nothing, right, you know, but, well, OK. You ready? I'm going to apply to go on that new game show, The Gold Rush. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say something amusing? <laughs> Derek, last night one of the questions was, who introduced the potato to England? And you said King Edward. <laughs> I didn't hear the question properly. <laughs> oh, look, Del, look. If you want to appear on the telly, why don't I try for something more simple? Like go on Stars in Their Eyes as Barry White. <laughs> what are you talking about? The firm's been liquidised. 
Or liquidated, or whatever the stupid word is. No, no, no. The firm can go on trading. It's just that I've been disqualified from running it. That doesn't mean to say that I can't work for it. All we need is a new managing director. Oh, God, I actually got excited then. Derek, who is going to be stupid enough to take over Trotter's independent <laughs> traders? All <laughs> <laughs> right, Rodgers, there you go. Get it down your neck. Oh, cheers, mate. Well, I don't know what we're going to do, Rodney. Do you? No, me neither. I mean, here I am, disqualified from running my own company. If I take out a loan, the tax man will nick me. If I work in cash, the customs and excise will nick me. My credit rating is so low, I can't even pay with money. <laughs> <laughs> if only, if only there was some way in which we could carry on trading. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's no use you trying to cheer me up, Rodney. <laughs> No, I'm afraid the company's finished. It's gone. Trotter's Independent Traders is no more. It's kaput. It's dead. Dead as the emu. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not strictly true, is it? I mean, the company can still operate. It's just that uh, I'm banned from running it. I oh, know. <laughs> <laughs> If only there was someone out there, Rodney, who could take over the firm, someone young and enthusiastic, someone full of enthusiasm and ideas, eh? I wonder who. <laughs> young and energetic, with ideas and enthusiasm. <laughs> Hang on a minute. You thought of someone, Rodney? Oh, no, he emigrated, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't he? Wobby. Honestly, I leave him all the time. There might be one person, Dill. Whom? Me. <laughs> <laughs> you? How do you mean, Rodney? Look, look. Right? You've been made bankrupt, right? And are therefore not allowed to run a company, right? I haven't. <laughs> no, you've got me all confused now. <laughs> Let me explain in simple terms, mm. right? <laughs> Legally, there is nothing to stop me taking over Trotter's independent traders. Well, man, let me see if I've got this right. <laughs> what you're saying is that you could run the firm. By George, I think he's got it. <laughs> That's a brilliant idea, Rodney. Oh, Jan, competent, as they say in Cairns. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, I'll tell you what we do. We go down and see our lawyer tomorrow, go straight round company's house and make you the new managing director. Rodney Tr Hey, Raquel, guess what? Rodney has only come up with a brilliant idea to save the family. He's going to be the new managing director of Trotter's Independent Traders. <laughs> I'm going to be in charge of sales, purchasing and finance, that's all. <laughs> Congratulations, Rodney. I was surprised you didn't think of that, Del. Yeah, no, that's just what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Damien, get away from that keyhole. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lad, isn't he, hey? <laughs> Cassandra, answer that phone, will you, please? Thank you. Yes, sir. I'll organise your bloody appointment book for you in a minute. Trotter's Independent Traders, how may I help you? That is one moody mare, that is, isn't it? <laughs> Look, can you blame her? Hmm? You're treating her like she's your personal secretary and you've just had a butcher's at her drawers. The only reason that I like Cassandra to answer the phone is because she's got a nice voice. Anyway, if you two weren't so proud, you and her could be living in her mum and dad's house. Oh, God, we've been through all this before. We're happy here. Well, we're here anyway. <laughs> I'm running the firm now. Cassandra's applied for her old job back at the bank, so eventually... So eventually we might have enough money to get our own place. I don't know who it is. Sounds foreign. Says he wants to speak to the boss. All right. <clears throat> oi, 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 excuse me. Pay? I'm the boss now. Oh, sorry, I keep forgetting. Bloody hell, I knew it was lonely at the top. I didn't think it'd be this quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you a beer, Trotter's oh. Independent Traders, how may we help you? Good evening. 
I am wishing to speak with managing director. Uh, yes, this is he. Uh, my name is Rodney Trotter. I'm the managing director. I am representative of Sultan of Brunei. <laughs> you never guess she's on... You never guess she's on the phone. It's only the Sultan of Brunei. Yeah, right. My name is Asif Hassan. <laughs> well, it's, it's very nice to speak with you, sir. There you go, Trick. Oh. Who are you talking to? The Sultan of Brunei. Oh, yeah, right. Hey, come on, you. And, um, how may I be of assistance, sir? You have advertisement in newspaper, and His Highness, he would like to talk with you. Yeah. Mm. See my effort. Oh, yeah. Sultan of Brunei reads the Pekameko, does he? <laughs> what a Moby. <laughs> <laughs> if you get me another brush, I can do your other hand for you. Go away. <laughs> His Highness, he would like you to fly to Brunei and be his consultant. No problem. <laughs> and uh, what exactly would you like to consult with me about? Recently, His Highness bought a crappy old three-wheeled van. <laughs> and he wants to know how to start it on cold mornings. I had you going there, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew it was you all along. I was just winding you up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't shove it, will you? Just shove it. <laughs> when the going gets tough, the tough get going. What's happened? Oh, Dave's just had a big row with the Sultan of Brunei. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs>